Surprised? A zoo in southern China thought it was clever enough to deceive its visitors with inflatable penguins when they claimed they were exhibiting real penguins. Guishan Zoo, recently opened in Yuling, China's Guangxi province, advertised itself as a place where people could see rare animals and learn more about wildlife. At the equivalent of two U.S. dollars and twenty-five cents for a single ticket, anyone can visit the first zoo ever in Yuling. Enthusiastic Yuling residents flock to the zoo with cameras, hoping to document some. Hold on a second, roosters and geese, and what the heck is this? A turtle in a glass box? Here comes the best part. The penguins are actually just some blow-up penguins, which were scattered around some dried-up pools. China, you are so Lehigh. Folks on Chinese social media Weibo are seriously entertained. As one guy points out, you forgot the other animals like mosquitoes, ants, flies, and mice that are displayed at the zoo. However, this isn't the first zoo in China to bamboozle its visitors with fake animals. In 2013, a zoo in Henan Province had a Tibetan mastiff stand in as an African lion. Fake stuff is everywhere. In China, it's normal coming across fake or counterfeit goods everywhere you go. In fact. It's probably more of a shock when things are actually real. You could say that China likes to keep it real with all its fake stuff. Take the completely harmless "Made in China" iPhone chargers, for example. They're a killer buy, and perfect for any occasion. Better yet, are these set of emergency doors located in a Chinese mall? There are two of them to make things extra efficient, and better yet, it doubles the feng shui. Which is a real China? Okay, so maybe having emergency doors that don't actually lead anywhere might not be the best idea. But honestly, what could possibly go wrong? In fact, having such genius architectural design could even prove to be useful to the Chinese authorities in some instances. So next time you're in China and you use some emergency doors that lead to nowhere, don't freak out. It's supposed to be like that. Black salve rots woman's nose off. A woman who turned to alternative medicine saw her worst nightmare come true after her natural cure ended up leaving her practically noseless. The unidentified woman had a bump on her nose that turned out to be a type of skin cancer. Treatment was easy, but would have involved removing thin layers of tissue until the area became cancer-free. Afraid of scarring her face, the woman instead turned to black salve. She applied the herbal remedy to her nose and to another spot on her forehead. Black salve is a topical paste that burns skin tissue. Despite being touted as an alternative cancer remedy, there's no actual evidence that it works. The woman learned this the hard way days later, when her face swelled painfully and eventually started growing huge black scabs. Three weeks later, she pulled the scab away to reveal a gaping hole where her nose used to be. So deep she could draw air through it. In the end, she had to have reconstructive surgery to fix her nose, and well, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> Even though half her nose fell off, the woman's cancer isn't likely to have completely disappeared, and may still be growing underneath. UK man fakes being crippled and in a coma for two years. A British con man who pretended to be in a coma when he was supposed to be in court after he scammed his next-door neighbor out of sixty-five thousand dollars was able to keep the charade up for two years. Authorities say forty-seven-year-old Alan Knight of South Wales had been scamming benefits while pretending to be a quadriplegic who had seizures and would occasionally fall into a coma. During that time, he was conning his elderly neighbor out of his retirement fund to pay for holidays and to buy a caravan. Knight was caught numerous times on CCTV in Tesco stores across the country after police traced his family's loyalty club card. Police tried twice to bring him into court, but both times he checked himself into a hospital, claiming his condition had worsened, where his wife would pretend to take care of him. Problem is, when he was in a coma, he was spotted by doctors eating, wiping his face, and even writing. When he finally showed up for court. He was wearing a neck brace and sitting in a wheelchair, pushed by his wife. Knight has cost the police, the healthcare system, and the court system thousands of dollars. He admitted to 19 separate charges of forgery, fraud, and theft, and will be sentenced next month. 
fake U.S. embassy in Ghana stayed open for a decade. The U.S. State Department recently uncovered a criminal operation in Ghana that had been passing off a ramshackle building in the capital as America's official embassy. The sham embassy was housed in a battered pink building with a U.S. flag. With white people manning the inside and a photo of Obama on the wall, most assumed it was legit. In reality, the consular officers were Turkish and in cahoots with the Ghanaian crime rings. Instead of getting clients from nearby, they advertised via flyers and billboards to customers in remote parts of West Africa. Clients were shuttled to the city, booked at a nearby hotel, and taken to and from the fake embassy. Walk-ins were not accepted. For a fee of $6,000, applicants could be issued fraudulently obtained but legitimate U.S. visas or any other false identification documents they needed. The scheme went on for a decade until folks from the real U.S. Embassy caught on, leading to the arrest of several suspects in a police raid. More than 100 passports, legitimate and counterfeit visas and documents were found in the investigation, along with the discovery of another fake embassy, this one Dutch.